I once studied the history of genealogy and the rise and fall of genealogy through the ages. And I discovered that uh, the renaissance in genealogy comes when there is economic unrest. Somehow when our economic life begins to shake, it's like being in an earthquake. We don't know exactly where we stand, but it, it's comforting to know who our people were. And, you know, as, as one person said, I, you don't know where you're going for sure if you don't know where you've been and where you come from. And I think that's a lot of it. I think people right now are just unsure of who they are and where they're going and what's going to happen. Genealogists are indeed the most curious people in the world. I think insatiable curiosity and um, perseverance that our mothers always told us was stubbornness or pig-headedness. We just won't give up until we find the answer. I think good ones respect the ancestors and let the ancestors speak to them through the records. One of the comforting things about ancestors, I find, is I know they are all dead, and they're all buried wherever they're buried, and they're going to wait right there for you. You don't have to rush. They're, they're not going anywhere. So this is comforting, too, to be in an archives and just take your time when all the rest of the world, everything else you do is such a hurry, this is leisurely, you can take your time and just get to know these people. The more background you know uh, about the time period, about the ancestor, and about his family and what was going on, the economics of that time period, the weather of that time period, what was growing outside his window, all that kind of thing. You, the more you bring to a record, the better the record will be able to speak to you. So I am a great believer in learning about the religion and the morality and the law of the period, as well as the geography and the record-keeping systems. Because if, I mean, most of the records we use are legal records. They were created for some legal reason. So you need to understand what the legal reason was so you can understand what the record's trying to tell you. I think if you go and try to make an ancestor say something he's not willing to say, you, you know, it's just like a living person. He doesn't want to say that. He didn't fight in that war, so don't try to make him. It's better if you let them be themselves, then they'll entertain you. The spirit thing. I know my children, whenever I start talking this way, they go, do, 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 do. You know, there goes mother off again. But I do think that ancestors, you know, I think the human spirit is such a powerful, powerful thing. I don't think it, it just disappears when people die, when their bodies die. I think there may be something still there. And, you know, if you, if you ask any group of genealogists if there's ever been a strange thing that's happened, a book they find on, on the uh, table in a library that they never would have thought to look in, or a piece of paper that somebody else is reading that you look over the shoulder and, and that's the answer. Every genealogist has this kind of experience. And I think it's because if, if we, you know, we are working with the ancestor to bring them back into memory, and I think they will help us if we let them if we are quiet and listen to them and let them help us, I think they will. And I know that you're gonna come with a net now and carry me off. <laughs>